In this mass today, we join Gateri's family to pray for the intention of praying for the peaceful repose of Joseph Mwangi Gateri, in whose loving memory they are praying today. We join Kaminja family to pray for the following intentions, thanking God for Neema Kaminja on her birthday, January 23rd, and we join St. Jose Maria Jumuya in thanksgiving for the birth of baby Frana to Faith and Maurice Terrell. Save us, O oh Lord our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to our celebration of the Mass today. We celebrate the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. The theme today is about the poor, the poor in spirit. The three readings of today, the first reading, the second, <clears throat> and the gospel are talking about the presence of the poor before God. It's an invitation to be poor in spirit. In a culture obsessed with strength and success, today's readings are rather startling. The qualities and behaviors identified in the Beatitudes that we are going to hear in the Gospel today, they look nothing like economic, political, or social strength. Instead, they appear to demonstrate weakness, vulnerability, and smallness. St. Paul tells us today that God chose the foolish, the weak, the lowly and despised to shame the wise and the strong. Those of us who say we follow Jesus, we have a soul searching to do based on the readings of today. How do the Beatitudes fit with our professional and lifestyle commitments. How willing are we to engage in the really hard practices that Jesus proposes today in the Gospel? And what would it mean if we are not ready or we don't want to? Lord Jesus Christ, you turn our requirements for success upside down. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, you remind us to live humbly and justly. Christ, Jesus Christ, you challenge us to examine how we live in relationship with you and with one another. Almighty God, have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, who do his commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you may be hidden on the day of the wrath of the Lord. For I will live in the midst of you, a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord those who are left in Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue. For they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, our response is Come, Lord, and save us. Come, Lord, and save us. <clears throat> from 
The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your call, brethren. Not many of you were wise according to the flesh. Not many were powerful. Not many were, no, were of noble birth. But God chose that of the foolish in the word of in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despaired in the world, even things that are not, to bring to, the, to nothing things that are, so that no flesh might, might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Jesus Christ, whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boast, boast for the Lord. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciple came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain no mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called Son of God, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are, blessed are you when men reviles you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. God is good, and all the time, to Msifu Yesu Christu. So I welcome you to the reflection of today, <clears throat> being the fourth Sunday in ordinary time in year A and the theme of today is um, poverty in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God. The three readings today talk to us about the value of poverty in spirit. Being poor in spirit, poor in the presence of God. The first reading from Prophet Zephaniah, seek justice, seek humility, is his call to the people then and to us today. Zephaniah announces that the humble of the earth will find shelter on the day of the Lord. The prophet preached at a time of great turmoil. Is a reading that asserts that the humble and the lowly are the hope for the future. When we humble ourselves before God, we become the hope and the future for humanity. Zephaniah announces God who prophesies, I will leave behind a remnant who will be faithful. 
that the poor, the few who trust in God and who never disappoint God in the call to know him and to follow him would be the hope of the world. In the second reading from the letter of St. Paul to Corinthians, God chose those whom the world considers absurd. St. Paul, in this first letter to the Corinthians, tries to convince the Corinthians that their significance comes from God. It doesn't matter how small they appear before people. Their power is the power of the cross, the power of humility in their relationship with God and with their fellow brothers and sisters. The Corinthians who accepted the gospel eagerly, they began to try to outdo each other in importance, even in their Christian faith. They began to compete with one another. They began to argue who is the greatest among them. And St. Paul takes the opportunity then to teach them to embrace humility. The poor are the people who are friends of God. Paul challenges the Christian community to rely not on human power, but on God alone. He tells them, whoever who boosts should boost in the Lord and in the Lord alone. And then the gospel today from the gospel of Matthew is about beatitudes. Beatitudes from the Latin word beatus, blessedness, happiness. And the beatitudes are only found in two gospels, the gospel of Matthew and gospel of uh, Luke. And today, we hear the beatitudes, the praise of the of the of the of the of the, the blessedness of the children of God, being pronounced by Jesus according to the gospel according to Matthew. Gospel of today begins the Sermon on the Mountain, which is a collection of Jesus's sayings, describing the qualities of followers the qualities of a good follower of Jesus Christ. The way righteousness is described in today's reading is through a traditional Hebrew form, beatitude. Beatitude simply declare that someone is happy or is blessed. The list in Matthew's gospel is surprising. However, the poor, <coughs> and the suffering were not ordinarily described as happy. But Matthew declares the poor and the underprivileged as happy. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. In the last Sunday's Gospel, we heard how Jesus launched his messianic mission with a simple, clear message and exhortation. He told us, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And so in today's gospel, Matthew introduces this series of beatitudes. In them, in these beatitudes, we see the kind of repentance or change of heart that Jesus is asking for from us. If we wish to enjoy the blessings of God's kingdom, and if we want to experience the kind of happiness that God is offering to us. In the Beatitudes, Jesus is not giving his disciples a new set of commandments like the Ten Commandments that they received from Moses on Mount Sinai for the people of Israel. 
the Jews in Jesus' time already had enough commandments and rules, so Jesus did not want need to add more commandments. 613 of them are found in the Torah. So more rules would be bad news and not good news at all for the people then. And the Beatitudes are therefore uh, good news. They are declarations of blessing. They are Jesus' recipe for happiness. If you want to be happy, then follow the instructions of Jesus. They are declarations of blessings. The word blessed occurs nine times in today's gospel reading. Declaration of blessing are found throughout the Bible. The first psalm opens with this beatitude. Blessed is the person who follows not the counsel of the wicked, but who delights in the law of the Lord. And the first beatitude in Luke's gospel declares Mary blessed because she believed that the promise made, made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. So what is surprising, dear friends, about the beatitudes of Jesus are the categories of people he declares to be blessed. They are not the prosperous, the powerful, or the famous, not those we would consider particularly blessed or happy, at least in today's terms. Indeed, his beatitudes turn upside down the values and attitudes that are dominant in our world. They propose an alternative way of life to that which most people freely choose. They articulate a vision of the good life seen from the perspective of a God who is love. And this was the vision of life Jesus himself embodied and lived all through. And in the words of an American evangelist, Carl Henry, Jesus clothes the Beatitudes with his own life. For the sake of the kingdom that he proclaimed, Jesus renounced power and prestige and he chose the way of humility and powerlessness. He was truly poor in spirit, and he identified himself with the lowly of this world, not with the high and mighty. He was merciful, meek, and compassionate. He mourned with the sorrowing. He was a peacemaker who offered the violent to resistance, yet he was uncompromising in his commitment to all who were exploited and suffered injustice during his time. He was persecuted for the cause of right and finally handed over to death. Everything he said and did flowed from and gave concrete expression to the power of the Father's love at work in him. So the Beatitudes make only sense in the context of the kingdom of God, not in the context of this world. In this kingdom, it is not the rich, the successful, and the powerful who are blessed, but the meek and lowly. These are the people God chooses as his privileged instruments in the service of his kingdom. And in the striking words of St. Paul in today's second reading, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. He chose what is low and despised in the world, things are, that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boost in the presence of God. These are the people through whom God works to realize his dream of a world transformed by the power of love, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry, a world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them, a world where all peoples live in harmony and mutual respect, a world where peace is built on justice and justice is guided by love. 
While the Beatitudes are not a new set of rules for disciples of Jesus, they constitute a radical challenge and a call to action. We cannot live without them, undergoing a profound change of heart. They go way beyond the moral requirements of the Ten Commandments that we have, which the rich young man in the Gospel of Luke was easily able to observe, according to him. They require that we imitate the example of the self-giving love of Jesus, resisting the idolatrous pool of wealth and power. They involve not merely a personal observance of ethical rules, but a rejection of the obscene inequalities that mar our world and a tenacious struggle for a more just participation by all in the gifts of this earth. They involve an unswerving uh, commitment to mirroring on the earth the kingdom of heaven and making the world a place of truth, a place of love, a place of compassion, justice, freedom, and peace. Let me end with this, my reflection, with a symbol and the inspiring reflection on the Beatitudes from the pen of Father Flo McCarthy. The Beatitudes are the badges, badges of a true disciple of Christ. They are the marks of a child of God. They make us rich in the sight of God. They open our minds and hearts to a new way of seeing and judging. They give us a whole new set of bearings. The things the Beatitudes stand for are very beautiful and very precious. Things such as peace, goodness, joy, love, gentleness, compassion, mercy, integrity. A person who lives according to the Beatitudes is already living in the kingdom of heaven. Eternal life will merely be the full blossoming of a plant that is green with life. Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that the someone on the mount that is delivered to us today through the Beatitudes may make sense to us that uh, we may be uh, touched to embrace the values of the kingdom as presented to us by the readings of today and especially Jesus in the gospel. The Lord be with you. Let us arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God.
gathered together by Christ, let us call to mind the Father's many blessings and ask him to hear the prayers which we make aloud or in the silence of our hearts. That the church will continue to preach the word of God with integrity and responsibility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those who lead the nations will be true peacemakers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those persecuted for what is right will rejoice in Christ's promise of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may always hunger and thirst for what is right. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we all may become truly poor in spirit, depending on God and being at the service of our brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. Lord, Loving Father, as we strive to do your will, receive these prayers we offer you. In your love, make up for what is lacking in our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just had you and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering he cancelled out our sins. And by his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O oh Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we, brought, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. (laughs) 
In a similar way, when Sapo ascended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, and advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Philip Archbishop, David Kamau's auxiliary, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, may you give kind admittance into your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Ruim with the meaning in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O glory and honor is to us, Almighty Father, forever and ever to the Father. Amen. In the Son. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, therefore we have the courage to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This is Christ Jesus who calls us blessed if we are poor in spirit in terms of depending on him is the Lamb of God is the one who takes away the sins of the world and happy are we who are invited to his banquet. Lord. In the body and blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. For communion. Oh my God, I firmly believe that in the truly present in the Holy Eucharist, I confess that I'm a poor sinner and I not receive you. But in that say word, and I shall be healed, and then I can receive you into my soul. I'm sorry for all my sins because they have offended you, and I resolve never to commit them again. Have mercy and forgive me, Lord. I desire to receive you with all my heart.
prayer after communion. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Blood of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, rain to my vein. Water fallen from side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wound, hide me. Let me not be separated from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me to come to you. That with your saints, and we praise you for all eternity. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall possess the land. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Taifa la Mungu tumsifu Yesu Christo. St. John, the Evangelist Holy Ghost Parish, announcements 29th January 2023, the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. We shall have adoration of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist today at 3.30 p.m. All are welcome, we adore, all are welcome. We adore Christ together. The second announcement. Self-help group will have their meeting today after the second month. The third. Les Britain Associates will have their meeting today in the parish hall after the 11 o'clock mass. All are invited. The fourth. Schoenstatt Movement will have their mass coming Saturday, 4th February at 7 a.m., followed by their monthly meeting here at the parish. The 5th, on 2nd February, is the World Day for Consecrated Life. In honor of this day, the parish priest invites all religious men and women with, within St. John Parish for a celebration of a religious vocation in the church on Saturday, 11 February, starting at 9 a.m. The main guest and celebrant will be his lordship, Bishop Rodrigo Magia SJ. Community superiors are requested to pick letters 
and to register the names of those who will attend at the, tab at the table outside the church or in the parish office. The sixth, welcome all new members who have joined our parish to help, you, to help us know you and serve you better. We request you to register yourself by filling a registration form at the table outside the church. The seventh, there will be infant baptism on February, in February. All parents with children of five years of age and below are kindly encouraged to register them on the table outside the church or in the catechist office. The eighth, registration for adult catechism is ongoing. All adults willing to undertake catechism classes and those willing to be received into the Catholic, church, Catholic faith are encouraged to register in the catechist office before 31st of January. The ninth, all men aged 18 years and above who are willing to join CMA group are encouraged to register at the table outside the church so that they can start formation classes. The 10th, all ladies aged 18 years and above who are willing to join CWA group are encouraged to register at the CWA sacramental shop or in the parish secretary's office. Formation classes will begin on Sunday, 12th of February at 11 a.m. The 11th, we shall celebrate World Day of Marriage Life on Sunday, 12th of February. All couples are encouraged to prepare for the mass animations that day during all masses. Couples dinner will be held on Friday, 17th February. For planning and logistics, couples will be couples will be willing to participate at the couple's dinner are requested to register through the parish office or at the table outside the church. The 12th, we thank all those who animated Mass today. May God bless you abundantly. Mass animation coming Sunday, 5th of February is as follows. The seven o'clock mass, the first mass families, nine o'clock mass, Saint Dominic, the eleven o'clock mass, Saint Claire of Assis, the five p.m. o'clock mass, YCA. The last announcement. We invite those who celebrated their birthdays in this month of January to come forward for the blessing. Thank you and we wish you a blessed Sunday.
recognize life to be a gift from God. And any time we have an opportunity to celebrate a new year, new birthday, is always an opportunity to thank God and to celebrate. And we want to celebrate with our fellow members uh, who celebrated their birthday today, praying that God will bless them and grant them a new uh, year of life and that God will always prove to be a good, caring, and a providing God in the years to come. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of our brothers and sisters who are celebrating, who have celebrated their birthdays uh, in this month of January, aware that life comes from you as a gift. And uh, every day we live, uh, it is because of your providence, it is because of your goodness. In recognition of that, we uh, pray and uh, dedicate these our brothers and sisters uh, into your own care and protection. In their new year of life, may you bless them. May you walk with them. May you support them with your graces. And may you always meet them, each of them, at the point of need. As your word today invites us to be poor in spirit, may you strengthen their faith and invite them into the journey of walking into being poor in spirit, always recognizing you as their God and always uh, realizing that you, are, you should be at the center of their life. We ask that you may send and shower your blessings upon them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. birthday once more and may God bless you in the new year of life. Let us now rise for blessings. The Lord be with you and may Almighty God bless and protect you Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks, Pete. May you have a blessed Sunday and a happy week ahead. Thank you.